we are children who of the Father, who and we are joined who with the Son, and we are the people who of His kingdom, who and we are family. Song before we get ready for the first special up the mountain down the valley you could go down a key if you want amen praise god Glory. up the mountain down the valley jerusalem is my home oh singing up the mountain down the valley jerusalem is my home
freedom fall.
worship him tonight. Hallelujah. My God, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. God bless you, Sister Ruth. God bless you, Sister Masala. What a message and song. Hallelujah. Is that the way you feel tonight? I feel every saint can identify tonight. Praise God. I love him too much to turn back now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Amen. Give me a key for I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. You can go down a bit if you want. Amen. But you feel like that tonight? Oh, hallelujah. You appreciate that song? Let's give them a, another. Amen. Praise God. Wonderful. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, amen. But from, oh Lord, and nobody told me that the world would be. Yes, Lord. And I don't believe he brought me this to leave me. Turn around, testify to your neighbor. Go and tell him. Say, I just can't give up. Oh, yes, Lord, no. I come too far from where. Hallelujah. Yeah, yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, nobody told me. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Oh, I just can't. I just can't. to leave without the music oh I just can't give up now I, oh come on testify just can't give up now oh yes I've come too far come too far from where I've started for up oh nobody told me nobody And I don't believe Well, he's brought me this far To leave One more time Oh, I just can't Well, I I just can't Get up now Oh, come too far Come too far From where I've started for Oh, nobody told me brought me this far to leave me. Amen. Oh, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Gideon over here, you can come. Amen. Amen. Let me have your seats one more time. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all. I do, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Listen, when I've lost my direction, 
You're the compass for all my ways Well, oh Lord You help me sing Oh, in sadness You are the laughter That shadows all my fears And when I'm all alone your hand is there to hold oh, 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 oh Jesus You're the center of my joy Let's sing it back to him Oh, oh, oh that's good and perfect comes from you You're the heart you're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Listen, you are why I find pleasure simple things in life you are the music in the meadows and the streams the voices of the children my family and my home you're the source and the finish of my highest dream Oh, Jesus You're the center of my joy And all that's good and perfect comes from you heart of my contentment hope for all I do come help me sing Jesus listen you are the center of my joy Jesus you are the center of my joy come on let me hear sing sing jesus you are the center of my joy one more time jesus jesus you are the center of my joy you're my joy Out of my hope for tomorrow when I'm lonely feeling sad you're the lift of my hands you're my music you're my song you're my hope all day long when I'm tired and weary don't know what to do I just let everything go and leave it up to you. I said, Jesus, you know what I call on when all my friends are gone. Oh, I said, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. of your joy. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God bless you, brother Gideon. Amen. What a song. My God, hallelujah. 
Amen, amen. Hallelujah. What a time we're having tonight, huh? Praise God, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We're getting ready for the first round tonight. Why don't you turn around and greet your brother, greet your sister one more time. Let's get ready to change things a bit. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've got joy unspeakable. Amen. Full of glory. Amen. Praise God. Well, I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory. It is full of glory. Praise God. Full of Well, now I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory. And the heart has never yet been told. Oh, let's see it up. I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory. It is full. Of, oh, now it is full. Of, oh, it's my time to shout. I've got joy unspeakable. Hallelujah. Hey, well, now I'm the has never yet been. Oh, we take it up. Oh, I've got joy. Full up, oh, I've got joy, unspeakable and full of glory, and I has never yet been told. Well, I've got joy, well, I've got joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Children, you ought to have been there when he gave me the victory. Well, he picked me up and he turned me. Oh, and he planted my feet on solid ground. Well, children, you ought to have been there. Oh, when the Lord said, Oh, now sing it, children, you ought to have been there. Oh, when the Lord said, Oh, sing it, children, you ought to have been there. Oh, when he came, oh, see, he picked me up, and he turned, oh, and he planted my feet on solid ground, where children, you ought to have been there, oh, and the Lord said, children, 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 you ought to have been there, oh, and the Lord, oh, preach back to me, somebody, oh, children, you ought to, oh, when he came, Victory, oh he, oh any, oh any time, oh tell the devil, oh now children, y'all have been there, oh and the Lord, give the Lord a shout of praise, hallelujah, hey yes Lord Jesus, oh I know what He did for me. Let me testify, let me tell somebody, Jesus is good, oh hallelujah all the time. Oh, he picked me up and he turned. Oh, and he planted my feet on solid. Oh, now children, your honor. Oh, and the Lord said, well, lift Jesus higher. Oh, well, lift Jesus high. Oh, come on, lift him up. Oh, lift him up. Oh, for the world to see. Oh. Jesus higher. Oh, lift Jesus higher. 
worship the Lord. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have a prayer request for Baboni Kalu in ICU ward, complicated case of heart, diabetes, pressure. Please pray for her complete healing, Sister Vivian. Let's bow our heads. Almighty God, healing is the children's bread. And Father, we ask for your mercy to extend to Baboni Kalu, Father. May your love surround in a special way, Jesus. And may the virtue of Christ reach out to heal her of this complication. And any other person sick in body here this night, may your love surround them. And may the virtue flow, Father. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the singing, the worship, the specials. We play a common honor your word among us, Lord. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. You may be seated. God bless you and welcome to our old year's night service 2016. 2016 is about to die and we see the birth of 2017. But I want to bring greetings to you from South Africa, but Raymond Thompson and the believers and the church there. Uh, we had some, uh, was, a, was a monumental meeting, tremendous meeting in South Africa. And we were so glad to be here and had, uh, had the opportunity to minister the word, the assistant pastor and I, and we are grateful to God. So tonight, we don't want to hold you waste any time we want to go straight in the word could we stand for the reading of the word oh praise the name of the lord looking forward for great things tonight Amen. the night service will be in two parts it will be shared with the assistant pastor so i'll take part and he will take part and we're going to, that's what will be the service tonight amen. amen so we want to go to numbers chapter 13 and galatians chapter 4 for two portion of scriptures tonight Numbers 13, reading from verse 25 to 30, and Galatians 4, from verse 1 to 7. Numbers 13. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Enoch there. The Amalekites dwelt in the land of the south, the Hittites and the Jebusites. The Amorites dwelt in the mountains. The Canaanites dwelt by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Galatians chapter 4, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all that is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world but when the fullness of the time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and because ye are sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your word tonight, and we invite you to come and breathe life into that word. Father, we are facing a critical hour, a critical time, but you promised this word to open up in such clarity that we could know who we are, where we come from, and where we're going, and whose we are. Grant, Father, that you would come among your people and bless them and pour out your spirit upon their hearts and lives. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do I hear a shout in the house? Praise God. You are alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. You are alive. Alive unto God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You love him this night? Amen. Have a title. 
matured, ripened seed sons to be made manifest. That's my title, matured, ripened seed sons to be made manifest. I have a subject, if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. That's my subject. I have an inspiration, go, possess, overcome it. All these are instructional words. Go, possess, overcome it. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Now, the Amplified of Galatians 4 says, Now, I, I mean, as long as the inheritor is a child and underage, he does not differ from a slave, although he is the master of all the estate. But he's under guardians and administrators or trustees until the date fixed by the father. So we, when we were minors, were kept like slaves under the rules of the Hebrew rituals and subject to the elementary teachings of a system of external observation and regulation. But when the proper time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born subject to the regulation of the law, here we go, to purchase the freedom of, or to ransom, or to redeem, or to atone for those who were subject to the law that we might be adopted and have, here we go, sonship conferred upon us and be recognized as God's sons. And because you really are his sons, God sent the Holy Spirit of his son into our hearts, crying our Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, which is a bond servant, but a son. And if a son, it follows that you are an heir by the aid of God through Christ. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Do you love him? So you are no longer a slave, a bond servant, but a son. And Jesus came to call out sons. He came to identify sons. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So I have a little team hungering after righteousness Amen. and the passion to become a manifested son. Amen. This is taking it now beyond church membership. Amen. This is taking about you going to church and you're coming, you love Jesus and you believe the Calvary. This is not that now. Amen. This is taking it beyond that. Amen. This is you having a desire in your heart. We'll tell somebody for the first time to become a manifested son. Amen. You don't just want to be a son of God. You want to be a manifested son. Amen. You want to understand that you are heir of God. Amen. If you are son, then you have an inheritance. Amen. Then you have a portion. Amen. Oh, that's why you could go up at once and possess it. Because it belongs to you. It wasn't revealed to you yet, but it belongs to you. Whether you know it or you don't know it, it still belongs to you. Because whatever the father have is yours. This it belongs to you. And the Bible said, Caleb said, we are well able. Well able. Tell somebody next to you, we are well able. Tell them that. We are well able tonight to possess it. To possess what it, every redemptive blessing that Jesus died for. You are well able to possess it. So you're going to rise up tonight. You're going to go out for 2017. You're going to possess it. And you're going to overcome it. Whatever it is have to overcome, yeah. you will overcome it. Yeah. You were raised up for overcome it. Yeah. You were born to overcome it. Yeah. That's what the devil don't want you to know. But you were raised up yeah. to be sons and daughters of God. Yeah. You're not an animal. Yeah. You're not a beast of the field. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You were called to be in this image and like this. Yeah. Oh, glory to God, we believe that. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Yes. Luke 9, 23, Jesus said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The Amplified, and he said to all, If any person will come after me, let him deny himself, disown himself, forget, lose sight of himself, and his own interests, refuse and give up himself. Take up his course daily and follow me, which is to cleave steadfastly to me and conform to my example in living and if need be in dying also. Amen. Ephesians 6, finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
There is no scripture say be weak in the Lord. Be struggling in the Lord. There's no scripture that said that. It said be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. That we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And somebody was sharing with Paul. Was seeing all the Roman soldiers in the armor. Seeing them and he take it and bring it a description for the Christian. To put on the whole armor. For we rest not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and against powers, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness, take, where we'll take over the whole armor of God that you may be withstand in the evil day. Amen. Oh, glory to God. And I heard a statement that thrilled my soul. You cannot defeat a full time devil with a part time Christian life. Oh, glory to God. You cannot defeat a full time devil with a part time Christian life. We are fighting daily yeah. on our road back to Eden. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. This is not our home. Yeah. We're only passing through. Yeah. If you think this is your home, you are wrong. Yeah. You will die here. Yeah. Praise God, but we're only passing through. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We are going back to Eden. Yeah. So we are fighting daily. Yeah. Not weekly. Yeah. Not monthly. Not every time you get a paycheck daily, Amen. you are fighting daily Amen. to go back to Eden. Amen. Oh, I want you to shout daily. Daily. Take up your cross daily. The struggle has to be daily. Amen. So, Brother Bam said, No wonder Jesus considered the lilies of the field, how they toil. Neither do they spin, but yet I see Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like that. And the lily was revealed in Christ. Amen. And how lily, Pastor Lily, he said, Lily, he gets down into the valley, the dark place, and he push himself up through the darkness of the earth. To do what? To glorify himself? To glorify everything that comes in contact with him. He has to toil day and night to keep his radiance of beauty to keep the perfume flowing he is pulled day and night from the earth to give out here we go that's what a real christian does Amen. we're not talking about church member now we're talking about real christians Amen. you pray one humble yourself and keep before god day and night Amen. in order in order that you might give yourself to somebody else Amen. it is not what you keep it is what you give that counts. You must give yourself out to others. And that's the way Jesus did. He gave himself unto others. And that's why perfect eternal life is when you can live for somebody else. When you're not looking for I, me, and myself and what you could get, but what you could give. Oh, praise God. So Daniel, praise God. He seen the angel come down and put one foot on the land and one foot upon the sea. And then he said, at that time, the mystery of God should be finished. And the world is groaning, waiting today. The people don't know the mystery of God. Why? They have not been taught the mystery of God. The only thing they taught, join church and put your name on the book. Be a good fellow. Treat your neighbor right. That's all right. But you must know the mystery of God. You must know the mystery of God. And here the bomb, no man can reveal it to you but the one that had the book yeah. and the bible said no man can call jesus only by the holy ghost yeah. the grand old holy ghost church is going to come out one of these days yeah. and shine like you've never seen before yeah. and daniel heard the seven thunders yeah. they uttered their voices daniel grabbed his pen and started to write and the angel said don't write it Oh, hallelujah. No man could only open the seas, but them was them voices. Oh, hallelujah. And in the last days, here we go. These seven voices. He said them seven thunders is seven voices. These seven voices would be made known by the real true church. You can see, can you get it? Can you see where the false and counterfeit is trying to keep great men from places like that? Oh, hallelujah. So for you to go into the mystery of God, great man, great woman, to go into the mystery of God, isn't that right? And this is the prayer from the contest. Make us fit servants. Forgive our past. Make us 
fit servants. You see, you cannot serve God according to the God you make in your own mind. You have to come back to realize God is the word. A lot of people have God as the imagination of their own heart. They create their own gods. That's not the real God. God is what he said in his word here. He didn't spare Noah. He didn't spare Moses. He didn't spare Samson. He didn't spare none of his sons. And neither will he spare you. Oh, praise God. Could I get a bigger amen? Oh, every son that cometh to God must be tested, must be tried. Not some sons. Every son. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, make us fit servants. I like that. Fit servants. Forgive our past. Bless our future. Guide us, O Lord, with thy mighty hand. Bless these ministers here. Bless all the laity. Praise God. All the visitors. Bless him. Bless him. Be thou with us, Lord. We are your servants. We give ourselves wholly to you. We say for, for 2017, that the power of your spirit might have more preeminences in our life and in our being. God, forgive us and help us. Raise up, mighty man. Oh, hallelujah. That just thrills my soul. That's a prayer. Raise up, mighty men. Raise up, mighty warriors of the faith. Not, not quitters. Not people that have given up. Not this happened and you're fed up and you can't take it no more. And you want to let go and you want to backslide. And you don't want to be a Christian no more. And no, 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 no. Warriors of the faith. Oh, glory to God. A warrior does fight. Regardless. When the other men are done, they're still fighting. They will fight to the death. They don't throw down the sword. They don't rip off the armor. They keep on fighting. Oh, give the Lord a praise. We need some more warriors. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When Peter taught quitting was part of the game, Jesus told him the devil wants to sift you like wheat because inside of you have a purpose. Inside of you have something ordained to come forth. But I pray for you that your faith don't fail. I pray for you. Hallelujah. I know the devil wants to wreck you. He wants to wreck your home. He wants to wreck your relationship. He wants to wreck your marriage. Yes, yes, he wants to wreck everything around you. But he prayed that your faith fail not. Want to wreck your mind. Want you to give up. But he prayed that your faith fail not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open this year, Lord. That hidden manner. That rock beneath the rock. That we might see the program of God. Cap off the pyramids of our lives. Put on the capstone Christ Jesus. Upon each and every one of us. May his great magnificent holy blessing be upon us all. And may the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon us. And may the power of the resurrection be manifested. God in this last day is going to draw true hearts from everywhere. No matter how much counterfeit the chaff the devil has, God will rise his church right out of it. It will be a ceiling as sure as I'm standing on the platform. Oh, glory to God. No angel says, Stop the four winds until them Jews be sealed. And before the Jews be sealed, a bride got to be sealed. The devil know you, the devil have to know you are sealed away. The devil have to know that God has sealed you and he can watch and can't touch. Oh, glory to God. You are going to be marked by God. You are going to be marked by God. God said, put a mark upon them that sigh and cry. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So the church that has been born in the mud of fanaticism and chaos, but she's won her way through the grime until she's, until she's on top of the thing, just waiting for her wings for the flight. Many shall run to and fro, but the people that know their God shall do good exploits in that day. Watch. Sit still, little flock. Positionally stay where you are. God is waiting and trying and pressing to get the mystery of God revealed to his church. 
that is what's holding back the coming of Christ and the great millennium is this great supernatural power that lays dormant in the church I'm not talking about letter I'm not talking about speaking the word I'm talking about a supernatural power because it will take power to leave here I'm not talking about mental power or intellectual power what's coming is more demonic than you ever think the plagues are coming on oh hallelujah praise God oh glory hallelujah hallelujah so a son is born by the Holy Spirit isn't that right and they are children they are God's children isn't that right praise God now the placing of a son the first thing after the son was he become a son but then we find out here we go his behavior is what set him to adoption behavior yes behavior hallelujah whether he behave right or not Pentecost is not a denomination it is an experience and no church could lock down an experience that experience come from God so no church can say they have it this one don't have it that's foolishness when God wanted to call Moses he didn't come through a church he would pillar of fire come down and burn in a bush and call Moses out when God ready to call Abraham he came down and said Abraham come out when God ready for you to call you right out God going to speak to your heart no pastor, no elder, no deacon could come between you and your God because God have no grandchildren God have no cousins and aunt and tante God only have sons and daughters glory to God he knows your name oh could we give the Lord a shout in the house he knows your name Glory to God. So all these preachers trying to play Pope and Bishop and Archbishop and just going higher and higher and higher and the people down here, God don't have that. God only have sons and daughters. God have offices for a purpose. Prophets for a purpose. Evangelists for a purpose. But that purpose is when it's accomplished, it's finished. There's going to be a fivefold ministry for the perfecting of the saints. So no one man can perfect no church. There's got to be other ministries that, that the people can hear those ministries. Hallelujah. To build you up, to edify you. Praise God to bring you into the unity of the faith, into the knowledge of God. If you know everything you're supposed to know, that you, you shouldn't be here tonight. You are here because we don't know. We need to hear from him. We need the Holy Spirit to reveal the word to us. Yeah. That's why we are here. Yeah. Have no big shot and small shot and side shot. And have none of that. Yeah. Only have sons and daughters of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh glory, we are the end time. And God is adopting and setting positionally in the church. Now there's not going to be too many he put in there. I'm going to tell that to begin with. Oh Hallelujah. So Brother Branham said this here, God waits. Isn't it strange? God wants his people to have a part to play with it. Amen. He said when Jesus looked upon the harvest, he said the harvest is ripe. The laborers are few. You pray the Lord of the harvest, which is him. You pray to me that I will send laborers into my harvest. It is some part you have to do. God is waiting for his church to call on him. Amen. He always did it. God is waiting today for the people to call his servant into action. And the servant can't get into action until the people pray. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, glory to God. And he said, I am the vine and you are the branch. Watch, we are the branches and he's the vine and the vine can't bear the fruit. It's the branches that bear the fruit. Amen. He furnishes the energy, yes. but we got to do the job. Amen. I have come down, yes. but Moses, you go. see it now he furnishes the energy I have heard the cries of my people and I come down but you gonna go hallelujah if it take Moses four years to get to Pharaoh he still have to go and he have to bring the word to Pharaoh let my people go so he come down but you gonna go oh hallelujah he going to anoint the people he want your eyes he wants your ears. Come on now. 
want your feet. He wants to get a desire inside of you tonight. A new desire to be a manifested son. To be a manifested daughter of God. You want the devil to know where you come from. You want the devil to see your badge. Hallelujah, your ID card. Your uniform. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. You want to be a demon hunter. You want to be a demon chaser. You want to be a man that cast out devils. Man that heals the sick. Man that raised the dead. You want to do the same works that Jesus did. Yes, 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 yes. You want to be an express attribute of God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Warming church bench is over. Oh, hallelujah. Coming to church and going back home, that's over. You want to be an expression of God. He furnishes the energy. You may be seated. But we got to do the job. The Holy Spirit is here tonight. He's here each night. He knows you. But the only way he speaks is through us. Our hands are his hands. Our eyes are his eyes. Oh, hallelujah. You pray the Lord of the harvest. That he would send laborers into the harvest. Because the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. In other words, you ask me to do what I know ought to be done. He could not do it until they ask him to do it. That's why you're supposed to come under expectation. You should come with a bubble in your heart. I don't care what your husband say, what your wife say, what your children say. I don't care if you get four flat tires on your way here. But when you come here with an expectation in your heart, it is something God could work. If I could just touch the hem of his garment. Yeah, touch it yet, but if you have a thought in your heart. Oh, I have a blood issue. I have, I have issues. I have more than one issues, but I come tonight. I know if Jesus passed by, I want to grab him. I want to take a hold upon him. That's why when Jacob hold the angel, he said, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. When I get a hold upon something, I want it. I want a reality. Oh, could we give a shout in the house? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So did you realize that after the testing time come, that tutorship of that son that was born into the family, if he stood the test and remains with the father's desire, then that boy was taken out and was put on a garment and a ceremony and that boy was placed into the family that he was born in. And that's the matter with the Pentecostals today. They jump here. They pull away here. Now, if you stay with the word, then God's seeing, if you abide in me, my word abide with you. He kind of deny it. God is waiting for his children, but they won't line up. And when they come to that testing time, will you accept it? Well, the church will put me out. All right, there you are. That's not Abraham's seed. Abraham doesn't act that way. So first, the seed must get mature fullness of growth no more growing it's a full seed now then the seed has to get ripened your faith has to get ripened being tested by the ministry of the word you have to come through the word now because when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus he was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tested hallelujah by the word if thou be, it's written, it's written, it's written. It was a word test. You got to get a word test. You don't need that power yet. You need a word test. That test to ripen your faith. That you know God is good. Even though he doesn't show up, he is still God. If you don't feel him, he is still God. If you don't heal you, he is still God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, he says, his bride has made us ready. We got the potentials. The Holy Spirit is here. The power to heal the sick. The power to do all these things is here. But God is waiting to get away from us, to get away from traditions. Oh my, and come with sincerity, and come with sincerity and sorrowfulness of sin. Oh, praise God. And what God looking for is to anoint somebody and send them and make that word act exactly. And where the word prophesied for this day, God is waiting to find somebody. 
In other words, when Isaiah prophesied, a virgin shall conceive, that word was just floating until Mary come. That word was looking for Mary. Mary had the anointing to connect with that prophecy. And when time God speaks, there got to be a listen before before He speak it, there got to be a people to receive it. God, God is speaking nothing, and the word come back void. I can't find them. All He found you, He called. All who He called, He justified. God, God, God didn't waste time finding you. You might be bent up, twisted, all kind of tied up, but God found you. And there's a purpose behind Him finding you. That's what we're here for tonight. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. There's a land to possess, friends. Some time ago, I talk about that super race, super seed, superman. Not the big S on the chest, not that superman. I'm talking about real sons of God. A superman. They belong to a super race of people. That's why the lion couldn't eat Daniel. The fire couldn't burn the three Hebrew boys. That's why we are so different. That's why Elijah could walk down to the Jordan River and strike the Jordan River. And Jordan River and open up. Because they were supermen. That's why Jesus could take five loaves and two fishes and feed a multitude. He was a superman. He was not normal. We are not normal. He said the same works I do, you're going to do. We tonight are supermen. Just in case you didn't know. We could pray for the sick and see them healed. Hallelujah. We can make the doctors we can make the doctors change their report. Yes, yes, yes. We have authority tonight to cancel sickness, to cancel diseases, to stop cancer. We have power tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To push back diabetes. To level blood pressure to normal. That's the power in the church to take sin and throw it out. To release you from your condition. That's the power in the church. Do I hear a shout in your house? Ah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's waiting for somebody that he can anoint with the Holy Ghost and prove that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, glory to God. Now, here this bum. Pentecost was born like a son. And that son was born in a family, had to be adopted also. And there is where you miss your calling, friend. When the adoption time come. Aha. Uh -huh. That's a new word now. Adoption time. You could cry, you could shout, you could scream, you could preach, you could run. It has something called the adoption time. Like when you have mangoes on the tree, that's small mangoes and flowers. When ripe time comes for mangoes, all the trees have mangoes on it. Because it's mango time. Plum time. Gover time. It have adoption time. When adoption time comes, matured, ripen, seed sons that have been tested by the word, going to comfort by the spirit. When that time comes, the time appointed by the father, because even though you are a son, you're under tutors and governors. Yeah. Until that time, yeah. you have to wait yeah. till your change come. Yeah. Come on, sister. Yeah. Come on, brother. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are son. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. But you've got to come to maturity. Yeah. You are son. Yeah. You have an inheritance. Yeah. But as long, listen, as long as you're immature, as long as you're not ripe and ready, you have to be like a servant. It's like you have nothing. You're not different from a servant. You have to follow instructions and different things. But once you come ready, ripe, mature, you get the clarity of your purpose. You can do like Caleb now. Caleb stepped forward from the tribe of Judah and said, Now therefore, give me my mountain. My mountain. Not anybody else's own. My own. I come to possess it. And if the Lord be with me, if the Lord be with me, I'm going to drive out. Come on now. Something you got to do. Come on, you sons of God. 
We want to see if we could change your thinking tonight. From thinking, God help me. Help me, Jesus. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, well he sent words for you to know. Yes. Sit down a minute. Oh, God. Oh, this trial. This trial. What, what about the trial? This test. This test. Oh, good. Good. So, what he wants you to send? Chicken and chips? A blessing? Blessing doesn't change anybody. That's why character is not a gift. That's why money does spoil people and corrupt people is the root of all evil. Blessings just corrupt people in that way. What, that's why pain and suffering and stress and distress is what gives a mold into your spirit and character. When you go through stuff. Hallelujah. Bible said Jesus learned obedience by the thing that he suffered. Jesus suffered. Yes, he did. The foxes have holes, but the son of God have no place to rest his head. He suffered. He struggled. But he overcome. Because he was a man with a mission. Oh, he was God in service to die. One time they, they tried to hold him. He said, my hour is not yet come. Don't touch me. You can't touch me. You can't interfere with me. And no devil can touch you because your hour is not yet come. The purpose God put in your spirit, in your heart, in your soul, that purpose must be accomplished. The church is waiting on me and you. Adoption time. When God can pour in his fullness, his power, his resurrection, and when the church and Christ become so close together that Christ becomes visible among us and raises the dead, and we go in the rapture. Then the prophet said in the report, when the human element goes out, my, and the spirit of God fills that vacancy. So all your flesh fights and all your human battle and all your family issues, that as human, that have to go out. Your human spirit has to be replaced by the spirit of God. Listen from industrial report. Watch. And the spirit of God fills that vacancy where you empty yourself. And that then will be when the church in its power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ will walk in his steps, in his power, in his thoughts, in his being. Then your words will become words. Then your thoughts will become words. And words will become material. Amen. One time Baram said, I'm thinking the thoughts of God. Because what he's speaking, you see, Jesus had to speak and see it materialize. He speak, materialize. He speak and materialize. And he said, heaven not will pass away, but my words could never pass over. Amen. So when Jesus said, he's dead, he said, I go, I go raise him. The, the damsel is sleeping. He, he, he speak it. Amen. Nothing could stop him. He's, he, in other words, he's moving past time and eternity. He's moving into dimensions. Oh, hallelujah. He knows he's going to see. He knows going to meet the woman at the well. He knows what's in her heart. He knows her condition. He knows your situation. He, he sat invited and a woman was crying and washing his feet with her tears and wiping his, his feet and so on. And he waited and waited and said nothing. He kept silent. And they know she's an off-key woman. Isn't that right? And they said, look, look at him. He's big prophet and he don't even know what that is. Then he busts it upon them. He said, I came here, he didn't wash my feet. This woman who sins are many, just in case you didn't, you didn't, know, you didn't know, I know about her. Her sins are many, are forgiven. That woman didn't get baptized. That didn't woman didn't do this and do that. No, she just did a service to God. And God said, I drop your charges. Did you hear me? You should be screaming on that one. I dismiss your case. Woman, you are free. And who the son of man? Come on now. Set free. It's free indeed. Oh, may the son of man set you free tonight. Free to praise, free to worship. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. I believe a church is on this road. That when the church will be so wrapped in Christ, not in church, more church, this is the best church, this is a nice church, I'm a nice pastor, not that foolishness. And I call that foolishness. Wrapped in Christ. 
Remember this, God has no grandchildren. God has set up no bishop and archbishop and pope and this. No, God don't have that. God wants us till we all come into the unity of the faith, into the knowledge of the Son of God, into a perfect mind, into your measure. Glory. 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 If God was measuring behavior, Peter denied Christ, Peter cursed, Peter, Peter ran away, Peter denied him not once, three times, plus curse. Deny him, run, curse. And that same Peter come down by the gate called Beauty Hill and says, Silver and gold have I none. Such as I have, I give it unto you. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter playing Superman. He wasn't Superman. He wasn't playing it. He said, I have this thing. This is resident inside of me. I'm a ripening seed son. I have been manifested. I come forth. There is power in my hands. There is power in my feet. There is power all over me. Need to change. Renew your mind. Hallelujah. Praise God. Their thoughts move on. Watch. They refuse the things of the world. They just move in the spirit. Live in the spirit. Move in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. So fulfill the law of God. Then the love of Christ in the human heart. Moving in the Holy Ghost. That great wonderful church will go forth. With power and deity. Because here we go. Deity will be revealed in the human beings. By the Holy Spirit. Bringing to pass the thought of their mind. So you are predestinated to inheritance. What inheritance? I didn't have any, but God left me inheritance when he put my lamb, name in the Lamb Book of Life. Amen. So it does have, it have nothing to do with, I am not worthy. Many people say, I'm not worthy, I sin too much. How much is it? Too much. I thought we were born in that. So this thing about, I am not worthy, doesn't count. Because if your father leaves your inheritance, it has nothing to do with your worthy. It doesn't have to do with your age. If your father die and you are seven years old and leave inheritance until you get 21, when you get 21, that belongs to you. Yeah. You could go to the lawyer and say, I want mine, what is mine? Yeah. My father left that for me. Yeah. I come to claim it. Yeah. I come to possess it. Yeah. I'm not leaving the office until I get it. Yeah. I want my documents. Yeah. I want the land, the house, the money, the bank account, the car, all what my father left for me, I, I want it. Yeah. And when Jesus died, come on now. Yeah. All that he left. Hey, remember the Stephen? Pray all oh, that he left. I want it. I want to possess it. I want to put my foot on it. God tell Joshua every place. You put your foot. That is yours. Come on, church. I'm almost done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when Adam fell, you may be seated. He lost his Godship. He lost his sonship. He lost his domain. But brother, we are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God who will come back and take it over. Amen. Waiting for the fullness of time when the pyramid gets to the top, when the sons of God will be manifested. Amen. When the power of God will walk out and will take every power that Satan's got from him. You cannot defeat a full-time devil with a part-time Christian life. Oh no, God don't want no part-time nothing. Amen. You got to go all the way. Oh, glory to God. Musician, come up, please. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One time a man came up crying to give his heart to the Lord. And the preacher said, he said, thank you, pastor. Could you come and give a testimony about how you change and how you come and surrender yourself? He said, I want to ask you something. What sermon did I preach? What text did I use? What song was sung in the church and the hymns that make you decide to do this? And the man looked at him in the face with tears running off his cheeks and said, Pastor, it was none of your sermons, though as good as they were. It was none of the choirs singing or the specials, though as good as they were. But I'll tell you this, what made my decision. I woke with a man who is a Christian. I have said everything to him. I call him holy ruler. I call him religious fanatic. Didn't bother him a bit, but he lived such a life till my heart all along he won a place that I want to be like that man and that's the reason I ask him to lead me to Christ I want the Christ that he serves you see church 
God works through the pastor to get his church ready. He works through the songs to get his church ready. He works through you to get his church ready. If your pastor would fail and continue to fail, you'll hunt and find the next pastor quickly. If the choir didn't sing right, your solo wasn't right, you will say to the director, the one who has the music, don't let them sing no more. But what about you as an individual? How do you fail in your daily living? How do you tie up with God? What God says for you to be shining light on the hill? What type of life do you live? Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God won that daily walk. So God come to bring us back to a fellowship with his son. Isn't that right? I'm going to close there. Oh, hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. So on the border, that is where they make the mistake. Staying on the border. God don't want you on the border. Cross over. The promise is beyond that. Divine healing is yours. Go and take it. God promised you to walk, brethren. Do you believe that? You have to go and take it. God promised you joy, but you have to take it. Stop sitting down like you have a begging bowl. You are not a servant. You are sons. You have a right to power on your job. A week, a week, a week. Stop saying that. Let the week say. God bless you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, you appreciate the word tonight. Oh, give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Oh, turn around, greet your brother, greet your sister. Amen, amen. We are marching over to Jerusalem. Oh, we are marching over to Jerusalem. son. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing that song. I want to live the way that Jesus wants me to live.
Amen. Amen. So get ready to change over now. We're going to call up a special. I want to live all the way that Jesus wants me to live. Oh, lift your hands and sing. I want to give. Oh, until there's just no more to give. I'm going to love.
God bless you, Sister Nikita. God bless you, Sister Masan. Draw me deeper. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. How many feel like that way tonight? Amen, amen. How many want to go deeper into the Word? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, amen, amen. Wonderful. Amen, amen. Well, let's sing that song. Wonderful, wonderful. Jesus says to me, as you get ready, amen, for praise God. As God's servant begins to come forward, amen. Praise God. Wonderful, wonderful. Jesus says to me, he's my counselor, a prince of peace and a mighty God is he. Well, he keeps saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my redeemer, pray. Oh, yes, tonight he is wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Oh, Jesus is to me. Oh, he's my counselor, prince of peace and my peace. Keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my redeemer, pray. One more time, he is wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me, counselor, prince of peace, mighty God is he, oh, keeping me from all sin and shame, oh, wonderful is my redeemer, praise his name. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. To end one year and enter a new year in the presence of God. There's so many places you could be tonight, but to be in his presence, there's no better place to be tonight. Can we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, for your love, and your mercy towards us tonight. Lord, that we could be gathered here as a people, as a church, Father Lord. Father Lord, at such a time as this, as we see the closing minutes, Lord, of 2016, and as we usher in 2017, Father, we want to be, Lord, fit vessels, vessels of honor, Father, that you could use in such a time as this. And for the next few minutes, Lord, just to introduce a thought, Father, and an inspiration for this year. Lord, may your Holy Ghost drop down and minister to your people. Father, if there's anyone who doesn't know you, may they come to know you, Lord, and may this be that kind of a day they would never forget if there's a backslider in our midst who may have walked in here tonight. Lord, maybe something pulled them. Maybe they just want to start the year right. There's something on the inside crying for more. May they not leave empty tonight. We welcome the visitors in our gates. We welcome those connected on the internet and most importantly we welcome the angel of the Lord we welcome Lord the Holy Ghost itself in our midst tonight to have his preeminence in the midst of the church and in our lives father may you bless us may you Lord forgive our past and may you bless our future may the Holy Ghost Lord take me out of the way and speak to your people in the precious name of Jesus Christ and the church says you appreciate the pastor tonight amen amen so just for a short thought, it's just a few minutes to midnight, so I'm not going to be too long with you. But I do have a short thought for the season and to usher in 2017. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me? Thank you, musicians. I certainly appreciate all of the specials, and it's certainly a great privilege to be back home. So I want to read from Hosea chapter 6. Hosea is the book just before the book of Joel. Hosea chapter 6 and also from Philippians chapter 3 for context tonight. Certainly want to welcome all of the visitors. We want you to feel very welcome and very comfortable in his presence. And the thing about God, he makes you feel comfortable and he also makes you feel a little uncomfortable. Because when you begin to look at your life, you have to ask yourself the question, do I measure up to the word? So we want to be comfortable and a little uncomfortable. Welcome and feel a little welcome. Amen. So reading from Hosea uh, chapter 6 and from verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord. 
For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow unto know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain. As the latter and former rain into the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as the early dew it goeth away. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and thy judgment are as the light that goeth forth. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they like men have transgressed the covenant. They have they dealt treacherously against me. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity and is polluted with blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent. For they commit lewdness. I have seen an horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is the whoredom of Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, O Judah, he had set an harvest for thee when I returned the captivity of my people. And reading Philippians 3, and reading from verse 13. Philippians 3, our last scripture reading, and reading from verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? We're just a few minutes before 2017. So just for a very short thought tonight, it's return unto the Lord. And for a subject, recognizing your day and your message. Amen. And for an inspiration, forgetting the things that are past. Because the only way you can forget the past is because there's something else to hold on to. So we read the scripture where Paul is saying to the Philippians, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, he's saying, I don't count myself to really understand everything that's going on. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And I believe if there's anything you understand tonight is you have a right, you have a, 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 an opportunity tonight to forget the past. To forget this year, to forget what happened, to forget what went wrong, to forget what hurt you, to forget what bothered you, to forget why you were not in service, to forget why you backslid, to forget why you argued and put it all behind and press towards something greater. Something more important, not your ambition, not what you want, but a prize of the high calling. Because it's a high calling that we are responding to tonight to be in the house of God. Can the church say amen? Oh, I believe it's almost midnight. So I could already begin to tell you happy new year, happy new season. Welcome to 2017. This is bright time. This is our time. This is revival time. This is restoration time. This is deliverance time. It's Holy Ghost time. It's outpouring time. And it's time to come back home. It's time to return not to church, but to return unto God. To return to the Lord. Not return to man. Not return to the pastor. But return unto the Lord. Can the church say amen? Oh, you may be seated. I'm not going to be long with you tonight. But you know what I'm convinced of? There are some parties that haven't started yet. There's the midnight party. There's the 1 a.m. party. There's a 2 a.m. party. Somebody told me there's a concert starting at 3 a.m. And I got tired thinking about it. And I tell myself if we are breaking into a new season, that 
Moses knew about and Abraham taught about and Brother Branham wish he was here and we are here breaking into a new season, a new dimension. All these years we are in the message. Listen, you may be seated. I said to them in South Africa, and for you visitors who are here tonight, I am tired of church. I've said it for years. I'm one of the few preachers who says they are tired of church because I'm looking for a reality. I'm not looking for church. I'm looking to see that same Jesus. I'm looking to see the pillar of fire. I'm looking to see silver and gold. I don't have. I'm looking to see, you may be seated, people restored and stay. Let me say that again. People get delivered and stay. Not delivered this week and next week. I can't find you. It means you were not really delivered. Because God does a total deliverance. I don't want an 80% deliverance. I don't want a 95% deliverance. I want all 16 elements to be transformed by fire to be transformed by the Holy Ghost I'm looking for that same power that Peter felt that the prophet felt can the church say amen you may be seated you have to forgive me but with every breath that I take and for as long as God has me on this earth, whether he says, Isaac, your time is to be finished here or go to the rapture, I'm going to give God all that I have. I might make mistakes, I might fall, but the devil knows whose side I'm on. He ain't make no mistake about that. Because it doesn't, it's not how much time you fall, it's if you can get back up. So 2016 is over. You have a blank slate today. Today is a new day, it's a new year, it's a new month, it's a new declaration. And the devil is mad because he has no idea what's about to happen. Because he doesn't hold a future. But God, he holds the future. He is Alpha and Omega. He knows the beginning from the end. He saw you here tonight and her word went out, return unto the Lord. Can the church say amen? So just for a few minutes, can I get a few minutes tonight? Is there anybody ready for another round? You're ready to go another high level higher? You're ready to give the devil a knockout punch? Is there anybody tired of being tired? Tired of being sick? Tired of being up and down? Is there anybody in the house? Can I get a shout in the house? Hallelujah, we came to serve the Lord Jesus. That's what we came to do, not to have church, but we came to lift Jesus higher. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. I can't hear you. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. That's only 80%. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. He's the center of my joy. He's the center of my being. He woke me up this morning and he has kept you all these years and he will keep you in this year. Let the redeemed say so. Said be the name of the Lord, you may be seated. Just a few minutes. I'm gonna go as long as you could go. So what time we finish is entirely up to you. Because it takes the people to pull the gift. The preacher can never bring the revival, but it takes the prayer and the worship and the hunger and the thirst to operate the gift. So you have the remote control this evening. You can operate the gift. You can turn up the volume. You can change the channel. You can do whatever you want to tonight because God is a God of the audience. He's a God of the people. That's why it's bright time. It's seed time. It's family time. It's dynamics time. Can the church say amen? Hallelujah. You may be seated. Just let me drop off this thought. We'll have to continue this in regular service. I gotta take care of the Caleb's. I told them in South Africa, it's a young people service. Because on the other side, there are no Caleb's. By age, everybody is young. So, but the George, that gray hair has a destination to be black again. And I'm not talking about using dye or using any other technology. It's just the genetic coding that's inside of you comes from God. And once you come from God, it could only respond a certain way. The board has got to go back. The gray hair got to go back. The back that's out of place got to get back. Everything you lost has to come back. We read the scripture, return unto the Lord because God said, I will 
will restore. I'm not leaving it up to you. The devil can't get involved because if God said he's going to restore, what devil, what demon, what spirit, no weapon formed against you could prosper. Hallelujah. A few minutes. So my subject, recognizing your day and your message because ignorance of this is what causes the problem in the church. Amen. If you have clarity of what you are born to do and what your purpose is, it's very difficult to backslide. Amen. But the Branham taught us that sin is unbelief and unbelief is sin. He said smoking, drinking, fornication, lust, stepping outside of your marriage, those are the attributes or the outward expressions of sin. But at the very core, it is unbelief. Because if you believe and you fear God, you would not do anything wrong. That's why David and Solomon exhorted us that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But we live in a time where people don't even fear God. So because they don't fear God, they walk around as if there are no consequences to actions. And when the consequences come, they are quick to say, oh God, help me. And God said, you broke my very basic of covenants. Basic of words. That you should fear me. I am a jealous God. I don't want to be shared with your job. I don't want to be shared in your marriage. What is due to me is due to me. I should be first place all the time. He is a jealous God. Can the church say amen? Amen. So two things. We have to recognize our day. And we have to recognize our message. So when we talk about recognizing your day, we talk about recognizing the signs and the conditions and the challenges. You don't need to be in the message to understand the signs and the challenges and the situations. The Pentecostals tell you the hour is late. The Baptists and the Methodists tell you time is short. So the day is not the issue. Because the Bible for years spoke of wars and rumors of wars. And we are living in that time. We are living in that day. We recognize the day we live in. A day where there is sin. Not just in the world, but sin in the church. That's why I read that scripture. That's the very scripture God's prophet read when he preached a message. Recognizing your day and his message. About the sin in the church. And about the priests and what they are doing and what is going on. But yet still, we must recognize our day and our message. The hour is late. The lid of hell is open. And it would seem as if God has relaxed the rules. It would seem as if God has relaxed the rules. Because for years, people have gotten away with stuff. Gotten away with doing God on your terms. When God is the one who set the terms. Worship is not optional. It's mandatory. Prayer is not optional. It's mandatory. Being in church is not optional. It's mandatory. Singing is not optional. It's mandatory. Having a revival is not optional. It's mandatory. It's what we do. It's who we are. It's what makes us different. It's not good enough to recognize your day. You must recognize your message. Because your message, you know what a message is? A message has a to, and it has a from, and it has a subject. Whether it's an email, whether it's WhatsApp, it's on the phone. When you call somebody, you are the from. And you're speaking to the to. And hopefully there's some content in there. Even if you say the word hi, it still means something of value. Hi. And you have a choice on how to respond. But this message that we're talking about is God's own words. So he is the from. And he had a to. So there's a message from God to an elect lady. And in that message contains certain things. There's a subject in there. In that message has rapture and faith. In that message has healing. So when God said hello. Locked up in every word is power. Locked up in every word is grace. Locked up in every word is the anointing. 
Let me give you an example. There's a centurion. He comes to Jesus. He said, Master, I recognize that you are a man under authority. Because if I say to one, go, he goeth. Just speak the word. My servant is in trouble. Notice Jesus didn't even ask for a diagnosis. He didn't ask, is it cancer? Is it diabetes? Is it tumor? He said, go thy way. He is well. That was a from to the servant. And those words had power. Those words had the solution to whatever that man's condition was. So when we come to the house of God and we speak from the prophet's message. It's a message of power that goes to the believer. It goes to your family. And there's no distance. There's no time. There's no obstacle. There's no hindrance. Nothing could stop it. Can the church say amen? A few more minutes. Somebody just put the volume up. Somebody wants to get going somewhere. They want to they wanna see their inheritance. They want to see their family delivered from their conditions. Is there anybody you want to see your family delivered? Is there anybody you've been struggling with sickness and you want to tell the devil enough is enough? Enough taking medication. My promise is that medication. My promise is that doctor's visit. You, you have to come back every two weeks for a checkup. No, I need to come to the rapture. To be the house of the Lord every week. That's my checkup, not the doctor checkup. I love about over said we are in authority to cancel every assignment of the enemy, whatever it is. Cancel the doctor's report. Tell the doctor go back to school because our school is different. It's not the school of theology. It's the school of the Holy Ghost and fire. And when you graduate from that school, your certificate allows you to speak against sickness. Speak against cancer, speak against sin, speak against lust and fornication. You may be seated. So you could know everything about the day, about the season, about the time. But we have a message. In Noah's day, there was a message. In Moses' day, there was a message. In Daniel's day, there was a message. What about our day? Our message is not just to come to church. You can do that in any place. It's a higher calling. Our message is not to be in the message. That's like you saying, I have a message, I have a message, I have a message. What's, what is the message? The message that God sent the prophet, that's the messenger. What is the message? The message is not to bring confusion. The message is not to bring argument. The message is not to have theological debates. The message is not to be interpreted or misinterpreted because we were taught in the message God is his own interpreter. He doesn't need help to interpret in the time and season that the word supposed to be made manifest. He doesn't need the preachers to make sense to it because he is the author and the finisher. He uses the preachers as microphones and he speaks to his elect lady because you don't belong to man or to the church. You belong to God. And if God call you, he is more than able to keep you. He's more than able to save you. He's more than able to fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Just a few more minutes. Listen to the prophet. The reason that people in Noah's day, listen carefully. Is there anybody sleeping? Show my raise of hands. The reason people in Noah's day did not go into the ark. And I don't care if this is the first time you're in church. I know you know about the ark. But the Bible said the reason that people in Noah's day did not go into the ark is because they never recognized the message nor the messenger. That's the only reason they perished. It's because they didn't recognize the hour that they were living in. So I want to encourage you tonight. I want to challenge you tonight. I want to push you tonight. Some people have been on a journey for a long time. And they might be feeling weary. You might be feeling tired. You might be saying, Lord, I've been holding on for a long time. You have had the message, but the day wasn't yet. 
And there are those who just came in at the right time, but you need the message because you have to recognize your day and your message. And when the two come together, when the word meets your time, like Mary, Mary knew the word a virgin would conceive. That was the message. But then there came a day when the angel Gabriel came and said, Hail Mary, thou art highly favored. Let me drop this off, friends. It's not going to be your preacher is going to speak to you. When God is ready, and we said it in South Africa, when God is ready to activate you, he's going to send an angel. It's not going to be man. It's going to be the angel of the Lord. Going to come visit you on your job, in your home. You're going to be washing the wares. You're going to be driving. You're going to be on the phone. But an angel is going to interrupt your life and say, your time is now. You've been sitting for a long time, but the hour has come for you to get into action, to make a church, to make a revival, to pray some more, to worship some more, to sing some more. Can the church say amen? You may be seated. Brother Stefan, I'm going to have to finish this message some other time. I'm on page 7 of 89. But I feel good. Because this is our time. This is our season. The devil is in trouble. Our commission is to return unto the Lord. I'm then going to skip through where the Bible said, if the churches today would only recognize the word of God that's made promise for this hour. People spend so many time on the mechanics and the details and the technicalities. But God is a God of power. He's a God of demonstration. He said his gospel is not in word only, but it is in power and demonstration. So we are here to prophesy because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I want to walk into prophecy. And the prophet, the bride, and the Holy Ghost has to say the same thing. So we got to speak for our young people. We got to speak for those that are sick. Speak for those who are not here right now. And say this year is our year. This year is our time. This year is our season. But brother Isaac, you said that last year. You said it a year before. You said it a year before that. Every year, no saying it's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. But I say, but last year you said 2016 is gonna be my year. He said it's still gonna rain. It's still. But one day the rain began to fall. The lightning began to flash, and there was a manifestation of that word. Can the church say, man? Amen. Hallelujah. I have a lot of stuff here, but I'm going to skip through this. We're going to take this up another season, another time. So our message, recognizing our day. Is it everybody know that this is the last day? Is there anybody not sure about that? You think they got like centuries to come and the U.S. just gives sanctions against Russia. And the prophet spoke about a time of tension and a, and a bomb that's going to come to America. All these pieces are being lined up in order. But you know what's amazing? That scripture we read, where the Branham typed it, he said it speaks to the Jews returning to God. But before the Jews can return to God, the Gentiles have to come back to God. So you can't talk about the Jews because they are God's timepiece, but God has them on pause. Because the Bible said he had scattered, but he's going to bring back. He said that scattering, he said God blinded the Jews. If God didn't blind the Jews, they would have seen Messiah. Because they knew that the day, they knew what day it was. They knew what the message was supposed to be. Because when the wise men came and said, where is he? Them brothers pulled the quotes, well, the prophet said there's one to come. And if you find him, bring back word. So they knew the word. They knew the day, but they failed to recognize the message of the hour. And when Messiah was walking the earth, the Pharisees didn't recognize him. He looked like him, he took, but it's like, I don't know who that is. They didn't recognize him. But you, a veiled message, hidden for centuries. Paul hinted towards it. John was caught up. He went higher and saw it. But you, you recognize it. From the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, you never met the prophet. But when you saw the word, you saw your name. You say, I know who that is. 
when they spoke, when the word spoke of adoption and perfection, I'm not sure you spoke like Paul. I do not claim to apprehend or comprehend, but this one thing I know, forgetting the thing that I pass. I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. I made all kinds of mistakes, but this one thing I do know, forgetting the thing that I pass, I'm reaching to something that's beyond, something that is supernatural, something from eternity, something from God, because I come from God and I'm going back to God. Somebody say amen. Oh my, 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 my. 2017 is demon chasing time. We are serving notice. You may have had havoc in 2000 and 2010 and 11 and 12, but 17, we are taking back what the devil took from us. All the young people, they're coming back. The sick has got to be healed. Those that are dead, they're going to be raised up because we have a ministry of resurrection. So I don't care how bad it is, what happened is irrelevant. We know who we are. I'm getting ready to wind down now. A few more minutes. Recognizing our day and our message. It's a message of truth. That's the message we are speaking about tonight. It's a message of life. It's a message of power. It's a message of adoption. It's a message of perfection. It's a message of revival. It's a message of victory. It's a message that shows us how to go. There's no other way to go but up. But we have a message to teach us how to get up. It's a message for our families. It's a message for our children. It's a message of healing. It's a message that's vindicated. It's a message that already overcome. It overcame in Paul's day, in Irenaeus' day, Martin Luther. It overcome in every day and in our day. God in his wisdom took all the word and tied it up in this day and gave you the whole atomic weapon. He put the whole payload in this Rapture Express so that when we leave, we drop the atomic bomb and finish the enemy. Hasn't he had his run for a long time? Well, we are serving notice. Satan, you can't avoid this one because this bride is going to overcome because she has a message that could never fail. Rapture in faith is laying in that message. Redemption is laying in the message. Can the church say amen? amen. Oh, I'm going to skip to the end. You can begin to play something softly. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh my. Is there anybody want to return to the Lord? Amen. Get in order. Get ready for 2017. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Brother Branham in the message, Why Little Bethlehem? And I'm getting ready to close it with this. This was preached in 1963. In December of 1963. So he was, he was addressing the whole Christmas season and the coming New Year as well. And Brother Branham was preaching for a while, but he came to a crossroad in that message. And he said, oh, come stand with me by my side. And he is speaking to the church in Phoenix, Arizona there. But I believe that he was also speaking to us in this day and this time. He said, come stand by me. He said, I'm standing in a terrible place. So he was seeing what was happening around him. It couldn't be a terrible place in that physical church. He was in another realm as he was speaking. He said, I'm standing in a terrible place. He said, I challenge today these tapes go over the world. So we were not here, but the tapes have come to us. He said, I challenge some man, some warrior who loves Jesus Christ. That knows that these things has got to be fulfilled today. Brethren, come stand by my side and pull the word of God. Forget those dried cisterns and stagnated denominations. That former religion. But pull the fresh word of God. Let's give Jesus a good drink of fresh Pentecostal water. That's his desire today. Back to the original Pentecost. Back to the word. It's prophesied we do so in Malachi the fourth chapter. Return the faith of the children back to the fathers. And he asked the question, who would stand this morning? morning and I asked the question who would stand this morning in the opening of 2017 who would stand oh my 
He said, oh, you Bethlehem dwellers, I call for men. Are there men in the house? Not males, men. You could be a male and not be a man. But are there men in the house? Christian men, real men of God, who are not afraid. I don't care if there's 800 standing on one side and 10,000 on the other. I want warriors who will come with me and cut a hole through this line of unbelieving Philistines. Trying to make creeds and feed the people. Oh, hallelujah. He said, let's get in there. He's crying for a good, fresh drink of Pentecostal water. Amen. Original Pentecost. Not a bunch of carrying on or screaming or hollering. I mean a genuine Holy Spirit baptism Amen. that produces the life of Jesus Christ back into the person. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. He screams out again, oh men of God, where's that sword? Our Lord desires a fresh drink. He said, I don't care if it's life or death. That's how real it must be to you. I don't care if it's life or death, but this year is my year. Hallelujah. I'm going to get the Holy Ghost. If he doesn't film, you're going to find my bones right here. But I'm not going to move. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep holding on for my children. Holding on for my family. Because this is too important. It's too real. A call is going out this morning. Return to God. Come, come, come. Return unto God. But the Branham goes and I'm calling for men to stand by me. Stand with the word. What the word says, do, do it just the way the word said I don't care what anything else says stay it that way it's the only thing that will cut so when this message that we have recognized to be the truth is applied in its power and with simplicity and the same way the prophet said he said it will cut every time no interpretation no feeling no emotion but you take the word of god and lay it to your situation lay it in your marriage lay it in your finances lay it to your children lay it in your house and watch the demons go to running because you are sons of god you are daughters of god born for such a time as this can the church say amen is there anybody who wants to return unto the lord Friends, you may be seated. The season is changing. And when the season changes, you cannot do anything about it. You just have to respond. And with the season of blessing and restoration, it comes with judgment. Because Brother Branham said many times, the people did not realize that God keeps his word not just his blessings and promises but he keeps his curses he keeps his judgments i'm going to share a story with you have we all may know it or some may know it but brother brandon was standing one time and his son billy paul messed with the toupee on his head and brother brandon went and prayed and he stood and interceded for his son and billy paul didn't understand what was going on because he couldn't understand the spirit realm and what was taking place. And you know what Brother Branham said to him? He said, I forgive you. He said, you're my son. He said, but I have no power. I have no control over the angel who works with me. And that angel wanted to kill Billy Paul for messing with his father's head. That's the kind of season we are living in. It's the reality of another Ephesians. We are back to the time of Ananias and Sapphira. We are back to the time of judgment, but also deliverance. So I want to challenge you, church of the living God. Don't take this for granted. Don't take prayer meetings for granted. Recognize your day. Recognize your message that was brought dripping with blood. Recognize that it's the grace of God to us to understand these things to be here tonight to hear these things not just to be in the message but the brand I'm in the token said don't just say you want to hear the messenger he said obey the message don't just say we know God sent the prophet that's not good enough what are you doing with the prophet's message 
recognize young people your day recognize your message in this message where the Brandon went into it he spoke about the woman and the way they dress and the way they act and the men in the church and the way they dress and the way they act and as I challenge the church of the living God this morning whether it's minister elder deacon trustee usher it does not matter we have to recognize our day and our message we have become lazy we have become slothful we have taken things for granted we come to church when we want we come to church whatever time we want we dress any way we want and judgment will begin in the house of God Amen. and because we have been given the word we know better Amen. what is our excuse recognize your day friends recognize your message it's easy to shout and jump into 2017 but if you walk into this new season without understanding how dangerous the ground is you will lose the Holy Ghost is moving around right now to put a mark upon those who sigh and cry for the abomination in the city not just in the city but in the church of the living God fathers who have abandoned their positions mothers have abandoned their positions daughters have abandoned their positions because we all have a position Amen. Amen. we are striving to be positionally placed to live such a life that people will look at us and say yes i want to be like you Amen. that could only happen if you recognize your day and recognize your message Amen. In that same message where the Branham said God will raise up prostitutes if he has to because his word will never fail and if you reject this message if you reject this truth if you reject this gospel God will raise up stones if he has to but his word will come to pass but I believe in my heart tonight that you are here because there's a call that has arrested you a call that has reached into the sockets of your soul and you have responded to that call. Friends, don't silence that call in your heart by the busy schedules, by your ambitions, by your plans and your dreams and your aspirations. Because unless God has signed off on it, you are going against his will. Amen. Oh, you don't hear me tonight? Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is where we need to be right now. There are people that should not leave the church tonight without repenting. There are people that should not even, you should be f scared to face 2017 carrying the stuff of the past. I challenge you tonight to put it under the blood and say, God, I'm not going to do it anymore. Lord, this lust, this, this lying, this, this laziness, this, this jealousy, this envy, this... Lord, I've been carrying this for a long time and I, I, I want to let it go, but I don't want to carry it into this new year. I don't want to walk out this church the same way that I came in. Let me bury it in 2016 Amen. and face 2017 knowing I could receive the Holy Ghost, that I'm a candidate because I want to apply the word to my life. Amen. God, he has an expectation of us expect something from us Amen. just as we expect him to do stuff right we expect him to help us we expect him to fill us but he also has an expectation because he has no hands Jonathan he has no hands but your hands he has no eyes but your eyes where will you take him oh God Jesus is looking for a vessel right now He's looking for somebody because he wants to walk the streets of Port of Spain. He wants to walk into the universities. He wants to walk into your neighborhood and he needs a vessel to use. Is there a vessel that God could use? Where will you take the Savior? Where will you take the Redeemer? Where will you carry him? What conversations will you let him witness? I challenge you church, recognize your day and your message. Because when you truly recognize your day and your message, then you can return to God and say, Lord, I'm coming home. 2016 may have been my year, but Lord, I want 2017 to be your year. 2016, I did it my way, but I come tonight, Lord, to, to give up to your way. 
I drove the car in 2016, but in 2017, Lord, you take the wheel. Is there anybody who feels that way? Is there anybody who wants to be a Christian? Lord, I want to be a Christian. I challenge you tonight. The season is changing. Recognize the change. Recognize the message. Recognize the time. Young people, a lot will change in this year. I told Brother Ovid, something happened to me in the last few days and this year will be a different year. It will be a different year. God has not relaxed his rules. He has not changed his laws. He said, I am God and I change not. There are people dying in the church. But we will not let them die. We will hold up their hands. We will pray for one another. We will go after the backsliders. We will have more prayer meetings. We will come to your house and pray with you. Because not one shall be left behind. Not one shall be left behind. God's word will come to pass. God has called you. You are not here by accident this morning. You're not here by chance. It's not just another service. But this message of Malachi 4 is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Is that your prayer right now? Lord, I want to be a Christian. You know how you've been living. You know what you've been doing. In my heart. Not another day, friends. Not another hour that way. Let's bury the old man in this surface. Lord, I want to be Let's bow our heads right now. Parents, I want you to catch a burden. I want you to catch a burden right now. Catch a burden for your children. Catch a burden for the young people. Catch a burden for one another right now. Without a burden, without a vision, we will perish don't let us be like those in Noah's day who did not recognize the message they heard it Noah preached it but they did not recognize it don't let our preaching be in vain don't let the prophet's message be in vain recognize it right now every head bowed every eye closed Heavenly Father Lord the pastor spoke to us Lord, about being mature, being ripened. See sons coming to maturity, ready to be adopted in the adoption season and time. And Lord, we are, have a mixed audience here tonight. Those that have been in the vineyard for a long time. And Lord, we have those who are just coming in. And we have those that are struggling, those that have questions, those that have needs, those that have conditions. But Lord, you know them all. Lord, we cannot face this year on our own. We're not going to make it. Our efforts have failed. Our, our own strength has failed. We are needy. We need you, Lord. We need you this year more than last year. We need you today more than yesterday. We need more grace. We need more power. We need more anointing. We need more of the Holy Ghost. We need more of the Shekinah glory. We need more of the organ's presence. We need Jesus Christ to walk through this church. Lord, may you move through the aisles right now, Lord. May you search my heart, Lord. Not my brother, not my sister, but Lord, here I stand in the need of prayer, Father. Lord, standing for, Lord, my house, standing for my life, standing for the young people. Oh God, may you minister. May you 
touch somebody here right now, Father. Those that may be tired and weary and they're thinking of giving up, we bind and curse that spirit. We are not going back. We are forgetting the things that are past. It's over. It's finished. We bury it in 2016. And we say, God, hold our hands. Lest we fall. And when we have no strength, Father, may you carry us when we cannot carry ourselves. Many times we cannot carry ourselves. Lord, lift us up where we belong, Father. Lord, may you touch the backsides that are here. Lord, there are people here I haven't seen in a long time, Lord. Let this not be a once a year occasion, but may something have been said tonight. Lord, beyond what has been said, but may you confirm the word, Lord, because the word is truth, it's life, it's power. May the Holy Ghost follow the word and press into the hearts of the people. Touch each one in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, the young people, they struggle on their jobs. They struggle in their schools. They have to fight and battle and they hear the word on Sunday and their friends press them. Lord, may you make them bold and strong like you said to Joshua. Be strong and very courageous. May you bring a strength into the church. Lord, may you take the burden of the people and increase the cry, Lord. Lord, we are one body and the body of Christ is the sickest body your prophet said on the face of the earth. Lord, we feel the pain of the young people who are backslidden. We feel Sister Christine's pain with her eyes, Lord. Oh God, we want to bring her before you. Lord, every condition in the church we bring before you. And we say, Lord, don't pass us by. You responded to Moses and said, I've heard the cries of my people. And we want to start this year crying. Lord, hear our cry. Lord, we need more of you. We need more of you. We need more of you. Right now, I want you to begin to talk to God in your own way. You begin to minister. You begin to encourage yourself like David did. In your own way for a few minutes. We're about closed out, but I want you to talk to God in your own way. He wants to hear you, Brother Anthony.
Oh, hallelujah. This is a time of groaning. This is a time of travailing tonight. Don't miss this opportunity tonight. Oh, you come to the altar if you want to feel, you want to be prayed for, you want to pray through tonight. You can pray through tonight. Oh, but you come through right. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, dear. Yes, Lord. Oh 
him tonight. Oh, he's coming your way. There he is. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Forgive our past, oh God, Father. Bless our future, oh God. Have mercy upon us, oh God. Have mercy upon our families, oh God. Mercy upon the children, oh God, Father. Mercy upon the young people, oh God. Mercy upon the Caleb's, oh God. Remember me, oh God. Here I am, oh God, Lord Jesus. Standing in need of prayer, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, you begin to cry out tonight. Oh, you worship him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Tell Jesus all your problems. Oh, hallelujah. What's the desire of your heart tonight? Recognize your day and your message. Here there is a ring. Oh, yes. Well, there never shall run dry. Filled with love 
up for a special so turn around greet your brother greet your sister and sing we're traveling on the right road oh we are traveling on the right road and there is one way to the city of god and we're traveling on the right road oh we are traveling on the right road yes we are traveling on the right road oh and there's one way Traveling on the right road. Well, we are traveling on the right road. Oh, we are traveling on the as the choir makes the way up. Oh, there's one way to the city of God, and we're traveling up. Traveling, traveling, traveling. 
traveling on the right road. Oh, we are traveling on the right road. And there is one way to the city of God. And we're traveling on the traveling, traveling, traveling on the right road. Oh, we are traveling on the right road. And there is one way to the city of God. And we're traveling. Oh, one more time. Yes, we are traveling on the Oh, we are traveling on the right road. And there is one way to the city of God. And we're traveling. One more time. Yes, we are traveling on the right road. Oh, we are traveling on the right road. And there is one way to the city of God. And we're traveling. Now give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Traveling, traveling. Yes, Lord. Oh, we are traveling. Traveling, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, yes, hallelujah, oh we're traveling on, oh one more time, we are traveling on the right road, oh we are traveling on the right road, and there is one way to the city of God, and we're traveling on the right road, amen, amen, hallelujah. Praise God. You may have your seats. Amen. Praise God. Change, 
Just two announcements. We want to have a service continues next Sunday at 10 o'clock. And also Thursday, we have a prayer meeting for the entire church this coming Thursday. Amen. So may the Lord bless you. Bless you, little brother. Let's close in the song. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may have a seat. <laughs> We're dismissed. Ushers could come. Amen. Praise God. We shall overcome, oh, we shall overcome, oh, we shall overcome someday, oh, sing in deep air.
malu 